Coming up tonight on 18 Eyewitness News. Governor Nixon visits Fredericktown today. Rick Santorum wins Missouri's Republican presidential primary, but no delegates. Plus, some local colleges may get a boost in their state appropriations, but not all of them. All of these stories, and is there more precipitation in the forecast? News, sports, weather. This is 18 Eyewitness News. Good evening, everybody. Thanks for joining us. I'm Fred Dawkins. Tonight's top story, Governor Jay Nixon is announcing plans to expand the Partnership for Hope program. Nixon made the declaration this afternoon at the Madison County Council for the Developmentally Disabled in Fredericktown. The newest expansion will add seven counties to the program, including Madison and Iron. Now, under the government's fiscal year 2013 budget, the program could expand to provide services for additional 1,100 developmentally disabled individuals for a total of 2,400 across the state. Through the Partnership for Hope program, individuals receive up to $12,000 in services per year. Among the 91 counties already participating in the program are Perry, Reynolds, St. Francis, St. Genevieve, Stoddard, Washington, and Wayne. Now Dustin is here with a look at our first forecast on 18 Eyewitness News. Dustin? Well, Fred, temperatures right now are in the 30s, 34 right now in St. Louis, 31 in Farmington, 35 in Fredertown, Ironton right now at 37, 32 right now in Rolla. This evening, temperatures are going to continue to drop into the lower 30s, into the upper 20s, 31 by 7 p.m. with clear skies, continuing to be 31 by 9. Clear skies by midnight with 30 degrees for your temperature with light to variable winds. Now, tomorrow morning at the bus stop, it's going to be mostly sunny with a temperature around 24. More details on your forecast and include some colder temperatures and even more sunshine later on in weather. Rick Santorum is the winner of Missouri's Republican presidential primary. Santorum received 55% of the ballots compared to Mitt Romney's 25%. The former Pennsylvania senator also picked up wins in the Colorado and Minnesota caucuses. Last night's clean sweep had Santorum looking beyond the primary and to November. I don't stand here to claim to be the conservative alternative to Mitt Romney. I stand here to be the conservative alternative to Barack Obama. Santorum is now second to Romney in the delegate count. Missouri Republicans will hold caucuses on March 17th to determine which candidate will win the state's delegates. After proposing a 12.5% reduction in support for the state's colleges and universities in his fiscal year 2013 budget, Governor Jay Nixon is now offering to boost funding for some colleges using $40 million from a possible settlement with mortgage lenders. Now, according to the state's budget office, area colleges recommended for a boost are Mineral Area College, whose $4.2 million appropriation would be increased by $229,000. Jefferson College, whose almost $6.5 million appropriation would be increased by almost $350,000, and Southeast Missouri State University, whose $37.5 million appropriation would be increased by $2 million. Three Rivers College in Poplar Bluff was not included on the list for an increase. Their appropriation remains at $3.7 million. When we come back on 18 Eyewitness News, the Army Corps of Engineers wants your input on shortening the recreational season at parks around Clearwater Lake. That story is coming up next on 18 Eyewitness News. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers is looking for feedback on proposed changes at parks around Clearwater Lake. The Corps is proposing to change the opening date of River Road Park to March 15th 
Piedmont Park to April 15th, and Highway K Park to May 15th. The Corps will hold a workshop Thursday afternoon from 1 until 4 at the Clearwater Project office in Piedmont. Deputy Operations and Project Manager at Clearwater, Fred Esser, says the public can give their input on the proposed changes. Basically, what we're looking at is any impact, any comments that they can give to us concerning, you know, what our projected reduction in uh, our facility operations would be. If they have any comments on positive, negative, anything that they want to discuss with us concerning the park reduction in terms of the, the amount of uh, recreation season we're going to have. The Corps claims tight budgets are forcing the changes. Samaritan Lodge 424 and Jobs Daughters Bethel 36 will hold a fundraiser in conjunction with Farmington's Steak and Shake. That's going to take place on February 15th and again on February 22nd. Jobs Daughters is an organization for young women ages 10 to 18. St. Francis County Assessor Dan Ward discusses the impact of the organization on the young women who participate in it. Uh, actually, I've seen a lot of the young girls have come in very shy and they learn leadership experience and they're, they're taught a, a lot of things that will help them outside in the community. And it's a great organization. To take part in the fundraiser, pick up a voucher at Farmington's Steak and Shake or CC's and then present that voucher at Steak and Shake prior to ordering on the 15th or the 22nd. And a portion of your proceeds from the meal will go to Jobs Daughters Bethel 36. Well, still to come, they are one of the most widely used tests for detecting heart problems. But do stress tests really tell the whole story in women? Don Arnold is here. She tells us what some experts are calling for more female-friendly guidelines. That's today's Your Health segment coming up. But right now, Dustin Kopp is making some last-minute checks of our Storm Tracker 18 forecast, which he'll explain coming up on 18 Eyewitness News. And welcome back. Colder temperatures are going to continue through the evening hours tonight into tomorrow morning. The sunshine will return fully by tomorrow, and then it's going to be warm for the next couple of days, and then much colder air moves in for the weekend. Here in southeast Missouri, temperatures are in the 30s. 31 right now in Farmington, 35 in Fredericktown, 37 in Marble Hill, as well as in Cape Girardeau, 37 right now in Ironton, 32 in Rolla. Factor in the wind, we do have a little bit of a wind chill. 29 in St. Louis, 33 through Ironton and Peter and Poplar Bluff 32 right now in Cape Girardeau as well as in Marble Hill. Right now here at the station we have a temperature of 31 degrees with under a mostly clear sky. It feels like 25 because of that north wind at 6 miles per hour. Current humidity at 70%. So our forecast for tonight into tomorrow will be in under a high pressure system. That's going to bring us some sunshine tomorrow. However, we're going to be under the cold air. Not as cold as it will be the next or this coming weekend, but we're going to still see um, temperatures that are going to be on the chilly side here in southeast Missouri. Otherwise, mostly sunny skies. It's going to be a nice one. So forecast lows for this evening. We'll see lows in the 20s. 20 in St. Louis, Ironton 23, 21 in Fredericktown and Farmington 27 for your overnight low in Piedmont. So anywhere from the lower 20s to upper 20s for your overall low. Forecast tonight, we'll see a low of 21 here in Farmington. Mostly clear skies. It's going to be on the cold side. Light to variable winds. Tomorrow we'll see a high of uh, 47 degrees with mostly sunny skies. Southwest wind at 5 to 10. As we look at the next several days, we'll see temperatures starting to moderate a little bit by Friday. 50 degrees with partly sunny skies. Much colder air moves in for you Saturday under a mostly sunny sky with a high of 29. 35 for your high on Sunday. Then clouds move into the area by Monday and Tuesday with a high of 40 on Monday. 44 for your high on Tuesday. And then on Wednesday, partly sunny skies. It with some rain, or excuse me, mostly cloudy skies with some rain moving in and a high of 53. That is the check of your storm tracker weather forecast. Fred, back to you. Thanks, Dustin. And now Don Arnold is here with a look at your health. If you're one of the millions of women heading back to the gym this New Year's to get fit, it's a good idea to check with your doctor first to make sure you're healthy enough for the exercise. If that exam includes a stress test, you should pay close attention to the results. Clark Powell explains why some experts claim stress tests are geared towards men, and the results aren't always accurate in women. 
By simply hooking up a few sensors to a patient on a treadmill, stress tests can instantly tell doctors a lot about a patient's heart. For decades, they've been the test of choice, and given how easy and inexpensive they can be, it's not surprising. But what is surprising is the fact that all the research that describes stress testing initially and that has gone on for over almost more than 40 years was only done on men. That means all the guidelines that determine who is fit and how fit they should be aren't always accurate in women. And that's something Dr. Martha Galati of Ohio State University Medical Center is hoping to change. Hey, good afternoon. Oh, how good are afternoon you? To you. Since 1992, you. Galati and a team of researchers have been following 6,000 women, okay, putting them sure. through countless Great exams practice. and stress tests. And she's finding the formula for heart health isn't always the same for everyone. I looked at what their age predicted fitness level should be, and we found a completely different equation than what has been established in men. For example, there are readings known as ST segments that measure blood flow to the heart. Those readings are often different in women, and things like blood pressure and fitness levels seem to play a different role than they do in men. That's information women like Harriet O'Toole should know. This former marathon runner had a heart attack she never saw coming, although there were clues. Looking back and researching family members, the male side of the family had had many heart attacks, most of them fatal. Which is why Galati says women who get stress tests should ask about female-specific readings. Even if they look good today, these tests can hold clues to future problems, but only if they're read properly. At Ohio State University Medical Center, this is Clark Powell reporting. That's for your weight, but not your Yeah. Galati is a process of writing new stress test guidelines specifically for women. If you schedule a stress test, talk with your doctor beforehand about interpreting those results. Coming up in today's Your Life segment, put your imagination in overdrive when it comes to date night. Dr. Bill Meyer shares some ideas on today's Focus on the Family. And coming up in sports, I'll have a look at high school basketball action in the area last night. The Blues find the net three times last night in their win over Ottawa. And the Rams are expected to name their next general manager by next week. These stories and more coming up in sports on 18 Eyewitness News. This is 18 Eyewitness News Sports. It was a busy night in high school basketball last night. First of all, the quarterfinal round concluded in the MAAA Conference Tournament. In boys' scores, number six seed St. Genevieve upset number three seed North County, 67-58. And Fredericktown, the number two seed, advanced to the semifinals with a 52-39 win over seven seed West County. On the girls' bracket, the two higher seeds prevailed in the two quarterfinal games played last night. Number three seed Farmington defeated six seed Potosi, 50-41. And two seed North County won big over seven seed Arcadia Valley, 59-31. From the Ozark Foothills Conference Tournament, it was semifinal night last night as number one seed Donovan had no trouble with Naylor, 72-41. And number two seed Clearwater survived Twin Rivers, 51-47. So Clearwater and Donovan will meet for the championship Friday night at 8 o'clock at Three Rivers Community College in Poplar Bluff. Twin Rivers and Naylor will play for third place tomorrow night at 8 o'clock at Naylor High School. And other scores from non-tournament action last night, Crystal City defeated Saxony Lutheran 57-32, Notre Dame big over Perryville 74-52, and St. Vincent falls to DeSoto 67-41. The Blues regained their scoring touch last night, beating the Senators in Ottawa 3-1. One of several of the Blues' struggling offensive players, David Perron, made his presence known, scoring twice in the victory. The Blues also picked up a goal from Chris Porter, breaking the two-goal plateau for only the second time in their past 10 games and helping the club leave town with an important road win, the first win in Ottawa in 12 years. The Blues will keep their bags packed for the final game of the three-game trip when they travel to New Jersey tomorrow to face the Devils. Kyle McClellan recorded the first upset of spring training last weekend. He arrived to South Florida, still a member of the Cardinals. Reluctant to head south for fear of being traded as soon as he arrived at Roger Dean Stadium, McClellan received assurances from the Cardinals front office that he was safe, at least for now. The Cardinals have a number of power right-handed relievers. McClellan is making $2.5 million, more than any of his bullpen brethren. 
And the defending world champions harbored interest in free agent starter Roy Oswalt, whose acquisition likely would require a corresponding salary dump. However, Cardinals general manager John Mozeliak attempted to put McClellan at ease by putting out the word that any deal for Oswalt was not imminent. And after a brief break for the Super Bowl, the Rams continue to hone in on Billy Devaney's replacement. Minnesota's Director of Player Personnel, George Patton, became the first Rams general manager candidate to get a second interview on Monday. And San Francisco's Director of Player Personnel, Tom Gamble, was the last GM candidate to get a first interview on Tuesday. The team is expected to choose its next general manager in the next week. And that's a look at sports. We'll be back with tonight's Your Life segment right after this on 18 Eyewitness News. I'm Stacy Johnson. Ask your bank for a loan. All they can do is look at your credit score, right? <laughs> Maybe in the old days, but not anymore. There are lots of ways your bank has of checking up on you. I'll show you a few just ahead on Money Talks News. We're just two days away from the weekend. Got anything fun planned with your husband or wife? Dr. Bill Meyer introduces us to a couple from Colorado who has some great ideas in today's Focus on the Family. We figured out that we've lived in Colorado for about 15 years, and give or take a few days, but we figured it's around 5,280 days. So Sterling started thinking about 5,280 feet equaling a mile. And that gave him an idea for a unique date with his wife, Christina. <laughs> so what better way than to come basically a mile high or come up to the mountains and celebrate with just a, a hike and a picnic? The Terrence go out of their way to avoid the dinner and a movie rut. Of course, there's nothing wrong with that. But the more creativity you bring to your marriage, the better. It's exciting not to know what's going to happen. <laughs> you know, the old, uh, you know, saying the grass is greener on the other side of the fence. I've got a, a version of that. The grass is greener where you water it. It's keeping the marriage first. By doing creative dates, you're taking time to invest in your marriage, taking time to invest yeah. in each other, coming up with a creative way to say I love you without having to even spend a whole lot of money. There was one day when I did take her to a restaurant and we got to the restaurant and there were 200 and some Hershey Kisses on the table and the wait staff had, had arranged them in the shape of a heart. And we were commemorating how many months we had known each other. You know. Keeping romance in your relationship <laughs> doesn't have to cost a lot of money, but it should cost you some time and some planning. That's something a lot of us guys tend to forget uh, after we get married. Can't take the relationship for granted. Yeah. It always has to be flourishing. You always have to be putting some thought into it find that spark and start investing in each other again. Happy day. <laughs> 5,000 more. There are several books and websites that offer creative dating ideas, so check them out, then get a sitter, grab your spouse, and go on a date. We're focused on the family. I'm Dr. Bill Meyer. And there's more valuable information on life's issues, relationships, and family all you have to do is visit FocusOnTheFamilyTV.com. When you go to the bank and you ask for a loan, you know they look at your credit score, right? Well, it turns out there are things they look at that you may not have even known about. Money reporter Stacy Johnson shows you how banks spy on you and how you can improve your chances for getting a loan. Your credit score, the most important thing a lender looks at to determine whether you're a good risk. But your credit score is no longer the only way some lenders look at you. For example, some banks are using new techniques, some pretty darn sneaky, to spy on you. One example, your behavior score. A behavior score looks at the money going into and out of your account. Some banks use it as a leading indicator of potential trouble ahead. For example, say your direct deposits stop. Well, that could be a red flag to your banker. On the other hand, if you're depositing a lot more than you're withdrawing, well, that could be a sign they need to target you for credit. There's nothing in your credit report about your home's value, but that doesn't mean potential lenders can't find it out. Sites like Zillow make it easy, and your mortgage, well, that's public record. So if you're underwater, that's a red flag. And what about your income? That's not in your credit history, but that doesn't mean many credit bureaus can't try to figure it out. 
They use things like your mortgage and credit lines, plug it all into a computer model, and come up with an estimate. Then they might just use that information to double check the income you're reporting when you apply for credit. Bottom line, you definitely should check your credit history and your credit score, but you will never know all the way lenders make judgments about you. You want three quick ways to improve your credit score? I've got them waiting for you right here at MoneyTalksNews.com. I'm Stacy Johnson. There's more valuable information on Stacy's website. To get there, just go to MoneyTalksNews.com. Dustin, I got out of bed this morning at 4.30. I just knew I was going to have to get up early, go outside, turn the defrosters on because I just knew we were going to have some either light ice or maybe some freezing drizzle or something to contend with. Actually got outside this morning and nothing but just wet. Just wet. Uh, the snow moved in about 11 o'clock last night, maybe just a little bit before 11 o'clock. Uh, in southern, uh, southern areas, they didn't see as much snow as we did here in the Farmington area. Driving in this morning, I saw some uh, light dusting on the grassy surfaces, but nothing too drastic. Uh, the more farther north you went, the more they saw. Right. And then again, it wasn't much at all. So it, just, it really wasn't that big of a, a storm, so to speak. But uh, it, it was a snowfall. Just a we little bit one. of one anyway. Yep. Anyway, that uh, what are we looking at for the weekend now? Is it going to be cold, rainy? What are we looking at? The weekend's looking pretty chilly, and uh, we've got some sunshine. But other than that, it's going to be on the chilly side. All right, very good. That does it for our newscast tonight. Thanks for joining us. We'll be here tomorrow at 6 o'clock with more on 18 Eyewitness News. Have a good evening, a blessed evening, everyone. God bless you and your family, and good night. Good night, everybody. News Watch is next.